next guest, um, someone who truly exemplifies the meaning and the word of public servant. Um, he does it all. Uh, he is in the community helping to support education. He is in the community trying to help economic development across the city. And he doesn't just rec you know, represent the folks in the second district. He really represents everybody in Cook County. And whenever Poonam and I call upon him to help us uh, with our events and help get the message out, he's always there for us. And uh, th there's just no words to uh, explain how much we appreciate him. And I know that many of you have the same level of respect for um, a man who is the uh, Cook County Commissioner for Second District here in Cook County. He's the president. Uh, pro tempore, I always say that the wrong means he's the second in command of Cook County. He's also the vice chair of the uh, technology committee and also uh, the chair, or uh, vice chair of the Comple uh, uh, compliance committee for both Cook County and the Forest Preserves, which means he wants to make sure that minority firms, women, veterans, or that they do have good representation in Cook County. Please give a big welcome to Commissioner. Good morning, everyone. I'm gonna be very brief in my comments, but I wanna be very direct with you. You're not gonna see a lot of people like me in the room. What I mean by that, elected officials who are elected to serve you. You're not gonna see them in the rooms like this. I'm unique. I show up. Can you hear me? I show up. So let me tell you why I show up. I show up because I'm a student of yours. I wanna learn what you know. So I go back to Cook County and apply it. If I don't be in the room with you to learn from you, then I don't know what to do when I get in the room. I'm just a listener then. I want to be a student. Let me tell you why I want to be a student. There are many things that were said today that I've become aware of of late, talking to IT folks like yourself. Data analytics, that's the next stage of how you then anticipate what people are going to want. Data analytics. Somebody mentioned that up here today. Data dictionary. We need to let the officials need to have data dictionaries so we can understand what you guys are saying. <laughs> Realistically, when you bring contracts before us, we need a data dictionary so we can realize what you're saying to us. Otherwise, it goes right over our head and we're just saying yes to the dollars. Realistically, data strategies. You've talked about that many times. And there should be a data strategy to everything we do. Why? Because there are large prisons out there. And if you don't have a data strategy, you're just shoving people in and out. You gotta stop people from going in and out by having a data strategy. You can say, John has been here 15 times over the last 25 years, and we can stop that because we know what brings him here. That's what a data strategy does. So there are things that you guys are doing that we as elected officials should be learning from you. That's why I show up in the room. Let me tell you some of the things that I've been doing here lately. Now as I look at this room right here, Five years ago, this was all men in the room. There were no women in this room five years ago. I see the difference now. Hi, Shannon. Shannon's back there. I just met Shannon at an event last week and I invited her to come. Teresa, been running around with Teresa for the past 10 years. But here's the difference is, not only do I see women, I see minority women in the room. Yeah. It's more minority women in this room right here than ever before. Hi, Mary Jo, one of my own folks from Cook County. That's a difference, folks. That's a huge difference in how data is being looked at right now because a variety of different people are bringing their intellect to data now. Here's what's important to me in Cook County. We are doing three huge systems in Cook County right now that are going to affect all of your lives. ERP. We're changing the way departments talk to each other, how our employees are counted with their time, so the finances of Cook County is going to be looked at on ERP. The personnel is going to be looked at. The time, our hospital system, everything we do in Cook County is going to be tied to ERP over the next five years. Why is that important to me? Because if I don't spend the $70 million right the first time, it's going to cost me another $70 million to redo the program again. Did anybody hear me? Because they'll come back and bill me over and over again if I don't understand it now. And that's when they do cost overruns. It cost the top guy on our ERP program $465 an hour. I've looked at it to work in Cook County. $465 an hour. 
I don't want to see him once. <laughs> At the beginning of the program, I don't want him to come back no more. He'll decline to Chicago, he can stay wherever he is, and just call me. Folks, if I don't understand that, if a guy starts at 465 an hour, that man makes almost $2,000 a day just to say hello to me. <laughs> Think about that. And companies can charge us that because they got a contract. Well, I have to be analytical on how I use that contract and those contract people and how I pay those bills in Cook County because those are your dollars. And you're holding me accountable for spending your dollars. If people like me are not educated on this stuff, we just let it go by over and over again. Over and over again. And I don't think you want your money spent that way. You don't tell comment to come to your house and charge you what you want. If I don't know how to turn that switch off, you know, the, the, the bill just keeps running. And that's what companies do to us sometimes. Because we're uneducated people when it comes down to certain things. IT, I'm not going to be uneducated about. At all. I had a sister who worked for IBM for years. And she taught me some of her stuff. She was a top sales rep for IBM for 10 years. And I learned some of those things from her. And she's a dog at it now. Right, Mary Jo? She's a dog at it right now. She's running the ERP program for Cook County. So I come in the room, folks, I can learn from you guys. This past week alone, I've been to Motorola's corporate office over on Michigan Avenue, their, their new technology center at, at 244, 224 north, uh, south of Michigan Avenue. You probably didn't know they had a facility there. Their corporate office just moved to Monroe Street. 800 employees of Motorola just moved downtown. They're in my district. Not, not the district belongs to me, but I know they're there. I'm going to meet the president next week. But if I don't go see him and see what he's doing here, they're just here. They're working around the world from right here downtown Chicago. They're selling their Schaumburg location. Why are they doing that? Why is downtown Chicago so convenient for them now? I gotta understand the strategy, y'all. That's what I'm doing there. I've been to 1871. Last Monday, they hosted all the elected officials from Chicago to come to 1871. Do you know how many people showed up? Yes, anybody? It was six of us there. Six. Three, all, four aldermen, two county commissioners, and one other person. I didn't know what they did. Because I had never seen her before. That's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And I learned so much from them while I was there. It's a tech room, just like Tech Nexus, in that facility with nothing but young people sitting around tables going at it. And I enjoy seeing that. How can we do that in the community to create the data source and the job source for people leading up to their jobs? How do we do that in these minority communities, in any community in Chicago? How can we create the Silicon Valley right here in our city? That's what I'm working on. I want to create the Silicon Valley in my neighborhood, in my city. I want to have those pop-up organizations to work on tech. And while IBM is doing my contract, hello, Nate, so you're sitting in the back of the room. <laughs> while IBM is doing my contract on ERP, I've asked them to give me some of that free time to help train kids in my neighborhood. Folks, if you got a $70 million contract, you can give me some time. Unquestionably, you can give me some time. And I'm asking for it. And I'm not afraid to ask for it. I've asked Cisco for some of that time. I've asked Oracle, who's doing the software for us, to give me some time. I'm not afraid to ask for it, folks. And if I don't begin to train kids across Chicago and doing this, it is my waste of time to be in an office for you. I've asked Comcast, who just opened Xfinity Studio right there on Weed Street, to give me that facility to do a Christmas party for kids. I want kids to walk in there and be excited to see technology that they've never tested before. That's what I do. I bring technology right to the face of those children so they can get excited about it now and learn that the tablet is just more than just putting one plus two, two plus three. Technology can turn your TV on. It can run your garage out of your garage door from your, from your smartphone. And if we don't try to begin to train kids, whether they're black or white, Hispanic, we got to train kids hard right now, you guys. And I got to do it at a challenge of a fast pace for me because I don't get that much time in this window. I may not be elected tomorrow. I may not. I'm going to be. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to count myself out. But that's important to me, guys, to drive those kind of things home. Wrap it up. I want more STEM schools in Chicago. Does anybody agree with that? Yes. So as you have 
that discussion, I go back to CPS and tell those folks, Forrest Claypool, who was now the chair, who used to sit right next to me on the county board, I can tell him now, Forrest, here's something we should do in partnership. We got GTF, who's an organization who wants to work with you to develop a skin school platform. You guys are right here. You're the best at doing it in Chicago. Forrest can listen to that because I was a seatmate on the county board. How about that, folks? Leaders talk to leaders in a smart way. That's what we can do today. And I'm trying to bring that resource to you. I'm not the guy who knows everything, but I'm not afraid to ask you questions. That gentleman back who works for the state asked about what is government doing to make sure there's a platform of understanding in a very small way, in a very quick way, how do we drive data, this data discovery? Let me tell you the best organization in this area right now that's driving data discovery, Homeland Security. They gotta talk to everybody. If anything happens, they gotta get data out quickly, they gotta get out to schools, fire department, police department, everybody. And Cook County just developed the best Homeland Security office out in the south suburbs. Everybody comes to us now. That's the platform, folks. And so I see it and I get it real closely. I get it. I run a hospital. I'm on the board of three hospitals, two clinics. I get it, EMR. And so there's a lot of things going on here. We're doing a platform now for our justice system to talk to each other. 18 million cases are in our court system. We add a million, three, a million three every year in our court system. Right now, it's mainly paper. We gotta digitize that stuff. I'm working with Clerk Brown to go to the federal court, also the state court, to make sure we're able to digitize and get rid of all these clumps of paper that we have in these warehouses. If we get rid of the warehouses, we take your money and give it back to you. We don't have to pay rent on the facility. Be smart about it, Robert. And that's what I'm trying to do for you. All we need is a, all we need is a big data center. Have all their files in it. Just says case closed, everything goes to everybody at one time. You ain't got to use carbon paper, which we use today now. We are the biggest carbon paper user in the country right here in Cook County Courts. Y'all don't know that, but I do. We have a sole source contract with a carbon paper company because we use so much carbon paper. That's your money, y'all that. That's your money. But we have to send files to at least 12 different, 12 different organizations every time a case is moved. And then you see these guys walking around with these big data carts. I mean, these big carts with, with files and files and files. Wouldn't it be better if an attorney walked around with his smartphone or a tablet, and he has everything on his tablet, he comes to court? That way he can get rid of two or three different attorneys being in, being in court with them. That's your cost going down, folks. That's how you understand the driver from that standpoint. So I just wanted to know, I get it. Some of the elected officials don't get it. And you'll keep re-electing them, and they won't get it again. That's going to keep costing you. Thank you much. What a wonderful speech, guys. As much as he loves paying $465 an hour, so GB have, has done something about it that um, has been communicated to commissioners. And then that is something called the commissioners can call on demand consulting by filling a simple form and the members of GTF get to volunteer and of course they have to sign there is no conflict of interest in that particular um, issue and and they can be consulting providing so the commissioners don't have commissioners still don't have to go to Cisco and 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 Motorola's and, and sure. Microsoft and anybody, but GTF connects them all as a members and they get to serve on that committee. So, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. That's so important, guys. I began to drive that last year when I was here. If I don't get a chance to talk to some of you guys as professionals and understand how to do ERP and things I should look out for, I don't know what questions to ask. We are developing a whole new program for our assessor's office. A whole new program for our technology and our, and our public safety offices. A whole new program for the operation system of Cook County. That is over $100 million we're spending out of Cook County's pockets of your money. i got to be able to watch that in a very different kind of way. And if I'm not doing that smartly, I'm just wasting your time and your money. And somebody will come back and say, I can do it better. And I'll be buying that the next year. We did it. We bought a, we bought a, human, uh, a HR system three years ago. $14 million. We're replacing it with the new, new ERP system two years later. 
Wow, so that's why we are GGF is great because we have a great advisory uh, committee for public officials. They can come and talk to folks about some of the things they're thinking about. So once again, thank you, Commissioner Steele. We certainly enjoyed having you today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for letting me be here with you.